Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use depth of field or have blurry backgrounds in your renders. This will significantly improve the realism of your GFX or animations and it works in both. It's really amazing. So yeah, let's get started. So first thing, let me just explain depth of field. So depth of field is literally just the blur in the background and how the camera has to focus on the object. So as you can see, this is the focus, okay? These flowers at the front. So all of this, which is inside the red outline, is in focus. The rest is out of focus. And to make it easier for the human vision to see, we blur that. And that, that, this is done in our eyes, as you can see. If you even just put your finger in front of your face, you can see everything else around it goes blurry. So this is an effect that has been commonly replicated and looks amazing in some places, doesn't in others. And I'll be showing you how to master this. I do this in my own animations. So um, yeah, if you like what you see in there, then this should be useful to you. So here's our render. I did a test render. This is what it looks like. So what we're going to be doing is making sure that the background is blurry and that this chair right here is slightly blurry too. We'll be adjusting settings and you know I, I want to hide these embarrassing clashing faces and some of the materials here aren't all fixed and the window down here doesn't look amazing so you know I want to fix that. So first thing you want to do is either in solid mode go to this drop down right here and check depth of field or you want to go to material mode. I'm going to material mode because I have a good system that can handle it. First thing I'm going to show you is what the settings in the depth of field menu mean because they might be hard to understand. So let me show you what these mean. So if we go to the camera properties right here, uh, which should be green by default, the object data properties, scroll down until you find depth of field. So I didn't even need to scroll for this one, so just check it and open it up. So we're not focusing on these two right here because that's for later. We're just going to focus on aperture. So aperture is literally just how you want the depth of field to look. So f-stop is just the blurriness factor. Turn it down and everything will become more blurry. Turn it up, everything will become less blurry. Anyway, so with blades you can create effects such as hexagons as the depth of field, which is really nice actually, just like that. And the rotation rotates those. So those are the blade settings. So the two that I find the most useful are the f-stop and ratio. And we're going to talk about the ratio. So the ratio literally stretches out the depth of field. It, it stretches out the blur. Turn it up and it stretches it out like this. This is usually my favorite way to have it at two. And this is called bokeh blur or bokeh blur. I have literally no idea how to say it. I have my ratio set to two usually always because it just looks nice. But you can have that at one if you want. That's completely your choice. So now we understand what depth of field means, let's actually go into focusing on objects because currently we've just been focusing on nothing. So first thing I'm going to introduce to you is a focus distance. So this will become completely useless to you if you start focusing on an object. However, the focus distance is a very useful one if you don't feel like using objects. All it does is just dictate the distance of the focus. So wherever 10 meters is, that will focus on it simple but it's kind of hard to explain so i'm going to turn down my f-stop to 0.1 and i'm going to turn up the distance until the character is less blurry you might also have to turn it down as you can see i have my character less blurry very nice you might actually want to zoom in at times just to see how well the details are rendered with depth of field especially if you're going to do 4k renders because uh these details don't show from far away in the viewport and i'm just going to turn up the f-stop a little bit so it's less blurry i'm going to turn up the ratio to two so this effect is really all I needed. I'm fine with it. I, I mean, I like it. In fact, I might turn it down to 0.2. So here it is rendered, as you can see. We have slot 1 right here, which is with no depth of field. This was the original render. Slot 2 with our new depth of field we just added. It, it looks so much better. So much better. Um, actually, something you might want to know is that Depth of field creates more noise, so if you're going to be using optics denoising, that noise might still be more visible. Although I sort of like it, so I keep it in. I, I'm fine with it. So yeah, this is our render. I'm actually very happy with this one. I don't even think we might need to use a focus object, but I'm going to have to explain it to you. So, turning this back on, 
you can see that the object is exactly what we want to focus on. We don't want to focus on the background and we have told Blender that using a distance. However, we can do that using something even smarter, focusing on an object. So forget the distance. It will be disabled once we add the focus object. So I want this focus object to be the head. So we're going to do that. Use the eyedropper and just select the head. There you go. Done. The distance has literally been done for you. you didn't have, you didn't need to tinker. It still looks really nice. There you go. So if we compare with the new render, this is slot two. This is slot three. There is barely any difference. I mean, I could check the pixels. Look, barely. But it's still good. We managed to make our time used more efficiently. However, one thing I might want to mention is that this does not always work. This is not always the best method. And in fact, it's not amazing for animations. Both the two methods I just showed you are not amazing options for animations. They work, but they're not amazing. So I'm going to show you one that is amazing that I literally always use. So let's just click on the X next to the focus object. So now we have no focus object and it's still the distance again. We are going to need to add another object. This time it's going to be an empty. So if we go to add, or if we go to shift A, we can add in one of these. This is in the empty section right here. So don't use any of these, use the empty section. And so in here, you can add either a plane axis or a cube. And a sphere works too, but I think cube, plane axis are the best ones. You can also use a sphere though. And actually a sphere is not bad. So those three are your options for depth of field, really. So I'm going to be using a cube. So I'm just adding in a cube right here. And I'm going to move this upwards. I'm going to scale it. And I am going to make it match with the character. It doesn't matter if some, if some stuff overlaps. So I think that looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the camera. And I'm going to go down to depth of field. And change the focus object to this empty cube. And the great thing about this is that you can change your focus on anything. So let's say something happened behind the character. I can just turn on auto keying. I can add a keyframe here, add a keyframe there. And then just a moment later, oh, something's happening behind there. Just like that. Moved. And then the character is completely out of focus. And that is how they do it in animations. Just like that. And with overlays off, it doesn't show because it's treated as an extra. So, like that. That is the beauty of using empties. And that the field is scale based. So, you know, some objects might look blurrier than others depending on how you scale your empty. Currently, there are no changes because they, it does need to be more drastic, but. You'll see it in stuff like HDRIs. Depth of field tends to get blurry very easily with HDRIs. So now we have all of our depth of field methods covered. Let's check out how they each look. So this is our first one with no depth of field. So it's not even a method. Um, yeah, I mean, it, isn't, it doesn't look that bad. My lighting skills are really amazing, so that's why. And if we go to slot two, this is our focus distance method. And as you can see, it still worked out in the end. I'd, I'd expect it to not be amazing and not be too good and work, but you know, I've managed to master it, so. Ah. So yeah, that was a pleasant surprise. If we go to slot three, this was focusing on the head. So the camera was, Blender literally only knew, hey, make this camera focus on the head. That's it. Along with a load of other settings, but you know what I mean. And we'll slot four, which is really our best method here. It was focusing on the empty. Honestly, there is barely any difference. It's only pixels. Honestly, I just recommend using the empty method if you're going to be doing animations. If you're going to be doing GFX, really, that's up to you. You can do any of them, but I prefer the empty method. Anyways, guys, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.